Nope. Does that work for an audio test? It's hot. Okay. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about axle length. We're gonna go through how to measure axle length on the different types of shafts we make, answer some questions and some do's and don'ts. Uh, so yeah, let's check out the kind of shafts we got. This is a press-on bearing axle shaft. On our order form, the length is called the AL, and we have left and right for left and right axle. Now, uh, we're gonna measure the axle the same way we'd also measure our C-clip axles. And that is going to be from the outside face where the rotor or drum would mount. So you're gonna hook your tape here on the axle flange, and you're gonna pull to the end of the shaft. Then you're gonna use a straight edge to come up from your, your end to your tape. Now, when Measuring a semi-float axle, both press-on bearing and C-clip, you want to keep your tape parallel to the shaft. If you measure at an angle, you're going to add length to your dimension. Don't do that. Depending on the length of your shaft and the flange diameter, it could add a lot of length to your overall shaft, which is bad news when it comes to C-clip axles especially. If you don't have an axle and all you have is a bare housing, we do have another way you can figure axle length, but it's only for press-on bearing axle shafts, not C-clip. All right, so you have a housing, but you don't have axles, and you need to figure out what length these shafts need to be, because you don't want to order something that ends up being a boat anchor or doorstop or a paperweight, a bit big for a paperweight. Anyway, we've got a couple of different ways you can measure a rear end. Let's take a look at those. All right, this is our nine inch housing, but this will work with any housing that is a press on bearing style axle. What we have here is a couple of different ways to measure. Number one you're gonna see is HL. HL is from housing flange to end of spline. When we measure from the housing flange, we're always gonna measure from the outside or the mounting surface of this housing flange. It's never gonna be the backside. The thicknesses of these flanges vary and will skew your dimension. So if you have a differential installed in your housing, you're gonna stick your tape, down on into the tube, it's a little bit far, and you're gonna stick it in until it butts up against your differential, and you're gonna take your measurement to the housing flange here. Now, if you're butting up against your differential pin, you're gonna take like an eighth inch off so that your shaft, when we make it, doesn't actually hit the diff pin. Now, let's say you don't have a diff, you just got a bare housing. What can you measure? We have another dimension that's from housing flange to outside of bolt hole. Now I need to make a clear point here. When we say outside of something, we're talking about wheel side, specifically with these dimensions. So we're gonna measure from the outside of the housing flange to the outside of this bolt hole right here on top of the tube, but still in the middle, closest to the tape. So I don't have to bend my tape a lot to get that dimension. So the outside looks like about nine and three quarter. And you would do the same thing for the other side about nine and three eighths. Now, our last dimension that we can take on a couple of different style of rear ends, but not all rear ends, is housing flange to center of pinion line. This dimension will probably require you and a couple of buddies and straight edges. If you have your differential in, you'll notice the pinion yoke sticks way out from the housing. And so you're gonna need a straight edge on your housing flange and you're gonna need someone to hold your tape and you're gonna try and eyeball the center of pinion line. This is the easiest one to mess up. However, we do have a little bit of a hack for you. This is a Dutchman dog bone measuring tool. Now this one's specific for the Ford nine inch here, but we do make these for a variety of rear ends and they always have two measuring locations on them. They have an end of spline, which is this little window here, and they have a center of pinion line, which is this little dot here. All right, so what you need for this is to know the orientation of your housing. It says top here, so it's gonna go right side up, and then you got your right and left. So you're gonna make sure that works, and then you just need a couple of studs. Put this sucker in there. And what the dog bone does is makes it super easy to measure. Not only can we conveniently measure our center opinion line, which again is that little hole here in the dog bone, but now we have a really convenient way to measure our end of spline as well. Hook our tape on the window and we can pull to our housing flange or vice versa, you can hook on the housing flange and pull to the window. These dog bones are super convenient. They're also super affordable and we make them for a lot of different rear ends, including a Mopar eight and three quarter, 10 and 12 bolt, a Dana 60, Dana 44. The catch is the dog bone works for press on bearing axles. Even though we do make it for a 10 and 12 bolt, it needs to have been converted to press on bearing because the dog bone doesn't show the true end of the axle. Like a C-clip has that button and groove on the end. Yeah, it does not show that on the dog bones. 
The next axle we're going to measure is a flanged floater axle or full float axle shaft. We still measure this from a mounting surface to the end of the shaft. However, the mounting surface on these is the back side of flange. This surface is what's critical. So we're gonna take our tape measure, we're gonna butt it up against the back side of this flange. We're gonna pull it to the end of the shaft. Nice and easy. The next one we'll talk about is our front axle shafts. We have Dana 44 and Dana 60 front axles. And the way these are measured is from center of U joint to the end of the shaft. Now, if you're bad at eyeballing center of U joint, there is a little hack we can do. On our how to measure guide, we tell you, you can measure from the flat, the flat, to the end of the shaft. So you have a hard surface that you're butting your tape up against. With the Dana 44 shaft, you can add two inches to get from the flat to the center of the U-joint. The Dana 60 shafts, the same, but a little bit bigger. When you go from flat to center, it's two and a half inches from the flat to center of U-joint. If you don't have shafts and you have a narrowed front axle, that's either a Dana 44 or a Dana 60, you can measure from the differential, the end of your spline right here, shove your tape and hook it all the way in against that gear and pull it to the outside where the tube ends or where there's a machined opening of your knuckle. You'll stick a straight edge across that opening and you can add two inches for Dana 44 or two and a half inches for Dana 60. All right, I think that's it for this episode. Okay. If you guys have any more questions about how to measure stuff, drop a comment below. We'll make some new content for you. We love answering these tech questions. So you guys don't have to order axles twice. We want you to order them the first time correctly. Yeah, nobody likes an axle yard decoration. Or maybe some people do. I don't know, you can repurpose it, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Catch is, is they are only for... Hmm. Ah, come push off twice again. Yeah. That's why I was. Oh. Sorry, boss. I didn't mean to break the tennis ball. Started it. I mean, it was just. It came alive. It became my enemy. How do they hang this little thing? <laughs>